I don't think anybody would ever tell that I had the procedure done, and that's what really was, was mattering to me. We're here with our hair transplant patient from about a year and a half ago, Dr. Lipnitsky from the Rebalance NYC YouTube channel. Make sure to check him out on there. So, how are you feeling now, a year and a half after? Young and beautiful. So just to recap, we did about 300 grafts to the right temple, just to even it out with the left side, and then about 1,250 grafts for the crown. So what you can see here is that compared to his original crown, it definitely has filled in quite nicely, especially in the anterior part. Uh, the crown where it starts to do the whirl and starts to change direction still has a little bit of a lighter appearance to it. We would add another approximately of the same size procedure, another 1200 grafts or so to improve the density. But you know, we were going again for something natural without harvesting too many grafts. He was concerned about how the donor would look. So we went with a more conservative approach for the crown, but one that definitely uh, improved the situation and improved the crown, uh, but but can you know can use more density. Well, I, I think originally I really wasn't going for this uh, overgrown hair look, right? Yeah. I just you know realizing at 50, you meant to have some sort of uh, areas of lost hair, which is yeah. normal. Yeah, at this point, I think uh, I mean I like the result. I would. Uh, definitely uh, like to, to reseed it just a little more, especially that now with it, we know that uh, just a little spot kind of left bare, right. but uh, otherwise, uh, yeah, it looks very natural. And uh, I don't think anybody would ever tell that uh, I had the procedure done. Yeah. And that's what really was, was mattering to me. With the crown, uh, it's important to follow the direction. Uh, and it's important to follow the direction of growth, and no matter where you're working on the scalp, so you really have to be careful when designing the crown uh, to follow that. And it's a very common scenario for people to feel like, hey, the transplant improved you know, the area that I was most concerned about, but I think I want additional density and then people come back for an additional surgery. So sometimes I hear in my consultations, like I just want one and done, just one thing. And, and I think some of those patients are setting themselves up for disappointment because it's not uncommon to want to boost density or want to then work on a different area. Like he doesn't have really any other areas that need transplanting, but for some patients they do, you know, we work on the front and then they have a wide open area in the back. So it's important to just set people up with the right expectations, I think, prior to surgery. Well, I just want to mention also that I'm not the best in following directions. So there was a reason for that. I didn't really want to use any medication that you suggested. And even though, you know, they definitely help and probably should have, but I didn't use any medication and I didn't use any uh, special hair products to stimulate. Neither that I had uh, any PRP done since the procedure. Mm -hmm. So that's something that uh, uh, probably could have been improved. If I would have uh, stick to your uh, recommendations regarding the, uh, you know, the PRP injection, like six months follow up, mm -hmm. as well as uh, some of the uh, either uh, foam or, or the pills, probably with the, you know, more hair. But at this point, you know, it, 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 I like what I have. I think I'll be happy to to do just uh, another small procedure to to improve. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah, with PRP. We always nowadays do PRP with the transplant and I'm almost positive we did yeah, that we did. for you. And then post-operatively, it's optional, we tell people, but you know, some patients choose to come in three months, six months, and nine months after surgery to help you know improve the speed of recovery and, and all of that and the regrowth. And then when it comes to medical therapy, our first line is always finasteride and minoxidil. And of course, medications have potential side effects, so people have to always weigh the pros and the cons. For our younger patients who are like in their 20s, sometimes late teenagers, years sometimes we won't even do the transplant if they're not willing to be a medical therapy because there's just so much risk for them to lose a lot more hair and when they want a slightly more aggressive hairline you have to be careful you know because we want them to be happy with their results you know decades later not just you know two years later for patients who are a little older you know and their hairline is is fairly stable um, there's still progressive loss that happens slowly over time um, that's what Dr. Lipnitsky is experiencing to a degree, but definitely that rate of loss is much, much slower than in a much younger patient. So, you know, medical therapy can still help, but then you just weigh the, the pros against the cons and make sure to check out feelconfident.com. That's where we have affordable medications that, that we frequently recommend, the minoxidil and 
stride that you can get, usually at better prices compared to all the other um, online platforms and sometimes cheaper than even your local pharmacy. Yeah, I mean, I think we'll plan for an additional touch-up uh, procedure in the near future and that'll make it even better. Sounds good. Any, anything for people who are just people are on the fence they don't always know if they should really get a surgery or if they you know if there's too risky or whatever so any any words for for people like that uh, well, I think number one is always you have to trust the doctor I mean I felt that it was a, not even a surgery it was a procedure it took you know six hours or so whatever it took mm -hmm. but uh, it was just a procedure, it was very comfortable. I was actually working while you were doing it and I was just writing stuff. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, days after that, uh, maybe a couple of days, uh, not even pain, just comfortable is the fact that uh, I had to close the, the, the area with a, with a hat. Uh, yeah. but, but I went to work the next day and it was all uh, kind of easy way out of from that point. It was just... Yeah, walk in the park. That's why I don't even have to think twice of going doing it again. I just I know it's gonna be another quite an easy time. Yeah, and from my perspective, it's always about having the right team in place, and uh, it's not just uh, the work that I do, but it's, it's there's a big team effort that goes into a hair transplant. It takes a village, I like to say. So you know, having the right team in place is so critical for not just the experience uh, for, of the patient. You know, like how they feel the day of, because the people make them feel you know comfortable and safe, and you know that that they have the patient's best interests in mind. That's that's uh, I think sometimes equally as important as just like good technical skills. So people who work with me, uh, you know, both of those elements are there, and, and that's why I think people have a good experience. Yeah, definitely great team. I mean, they they fun, they they easy to work with for me at least. And I felt like it was a great environment, uh, and uh, that's why the day flew by real quickly. And uh, I'm sure you had an easier time having a good team next to you. So. Yeah, always, always. Thanks for trusting us. Thank you.